Hi all, Geo here, and today we've got quite the journey. We're going to be taking this knockoff Wooden Railway Emily toy and see if we can salvage it into something even better than before. You know the drill, let's jump into it. So let's start at the beginning with Emily's basis, a GNR Sterling 422. It doesn't need a rail fan to tell you that this is a beautiful locomotive. And Emily's model in the TV series is the perfect representation of the sophistication and grace of the original loco, which is why I felt I needed to do my own take on Emily in wooden scale. I think if we need to have a discussion on wooden models missing the mark, Emily's wins. Now, not to complain about a toy aimed for toddlers, but if you look at this, and then you look at this, I think you can see where I'm coming from. Even the 2022 reboot model made to rectify past errors seems like such a far cry from what the model should be. And why is she square? He's square. I was quite intrigued to see that the counterfeit knockoff Emily floating around had a taller cab, rectifying her quite obvious height issue. This led to an idea that by extending her running board, adding a freewheeling bogey in front, and a taller funnel, I could easily make a far more accurate model. After a few proof of concept edits, I ordered one along with a Henry, which I intended to use the front bogey and boiler from. And after a month of waiting, they finally arrived. And I was met with a dozen questions like, what's wrong with the boiler? Why is it square? The one in the photo was round. And why does the wheel arch have a huge chunk taken out of it? As expected with cheap garbage, you get what you pay for. And I can see I had my work cut out for me. Disassembling Emily was a tad bit difficult, but got easier near the end. Unintentionally, I ended up damaging the other wheel arch that didn't have the chunk missing, leaving both of them mutilated in some capacity. A new record! Before I could start modifying, I had to fill those gaps. I had a pretty simple solution to fill it using some cardstock in this pen. If I can, if I can just get the damn, if I can just get the damn cap, oh, there we go. I was able to cut some pieces of cardboard to fill the affected spots and use cheap super glue to secure them into place. The cut in one of the sides was a tad bit deeper than anticipated, so I cut an additional piece. Perfect. I was originally going to use the boiler from Henry on the model, but after realizing how thick and warped it was, I decided not to use it. Ironically, it was not the first time I bought a large tender engine to use their boiler, but then actually deciding against it, which if I had a quarter for every time that happened, I'd just have two quarters, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. I decided in place to use a PVC pipe, ironically the same type I used on my City of Churro model. The width of the model was slightly longer now due to the pipe, so the cab had to be modified to match. That was done by cutting it in two and placing a popsicle stick in between the sides. Continuing this leg of the build was the running board, in which a new one was completely scratch built with some scrap wood, while using the original as reference to accommodate for the large drive wheel. Next came my best friend in the whole wide world, wood filler, which was applied to most of the surfaces. The arches were also filled and sanded too, which turned out incredible, especially as you couldn't see where the damage was. Edges of the cab were also heavily sanded to match the curves on the original model. And finally, following that, everything was glued to the running board. Using the same wood that I used for the running board, a small piece was cut and glued between the arches and what would be the smoke box. In actuality, this piece should be a lot thicker, but with my dimensions it worked fine. After a test fit of the PVC boiler, I'd say we're on the right track, unfortunate putt intended. Another piece was glued on the inside to support the pipe from slouching downwards. 
and everything was hit with a light sanding for a smooth uniform surface. On the note of smooth uniform surfaces, the cab roof was not, specifically it wasn't symmetrical, something you see a lot in knockoffs, so it was heavily sanded until it was even. I focused my attention now on the chassis. The front chassis would be used unmodified, not including the colors of the wheels. But the rear, which held the drive wheel and rear training wheels, had to have the front removed. I did this by popping off the magnets using a flathead screwdriver and just cutting it down. And now was probably the most important part of this custom, Emily's smoke box. Now compared to other parts of this model, this felt the most important to get right as the smoke box is such an important and recognizable part of the original Loco and Emily herself. I was planning to use the original, but modify it in some way, but I decided that wasn't a good idea considering how squished it was. So salvaging what I could, I cut off the top of the funnel and side lumps. Using a broken Thomas smoke box as a base, I sculpted it on top of it using Milliput. And yes, for those who have followed this channel from the beginning, I finally bought Milliput. For those unaware, it's a two-part epoxy clay, kind of like air-dry clay except it dries in one piece and thankfully does not crack. Once it was in shape, I glued it to a piece of wood and then glued the side humps on. I'd make a reference to the Black Eyed Peas song, but I don't want to get a copyright claim or sound like a perv. After some refining, it was done, and I couldn't be happier with it. Before I put the milliput away, I used a little bit to help fill the spot where the boiler rests. Following that, the back of the arches were filled in with a piece of cardstock and the PVC pipe was glued into place. The next day, the milliput on the smoke box dried, so it was immediately hit with multiple rounds of sanding. Between doing that, I used my DIY lath trick and made her funnel using a wooden dowel. With a few more test fits and some more sanding, everything was really coming together. Bouncing back to the body, I began making a skirt for the running board using some cardstock. This was because the wood I used ended up being too thin. Each piece was measured, cut to size, and glued on. I coated the pieces with more super glue to harden them and to make them stronger, which worked. Emily's body was basically done besides a few cosmetic issues that I could clean up later. So I decided to move to the wheels. There was no modification that had to be done to them, so it was straight to painting. And that created a problem. Do I brush paint it or use spray? I really hate brush painting them, so I decided spray was the way to go here. I'd like to talk about the color first, which is this Rust-Oleum Dark Green. I remember the moment I saw it in Canadian Tire, I had to instantly buy it for the project. The green was almost a perfect match. But as I've been no stranger to say, I don't have a great history with spray paints, especially Rust-Oleum branded items. Granted, a small part of that history has arise from my negligence, but simple things that these paints should be able to do don't ever seem to work out to me. But I decided for the sake of color and accuracy, I'd give it a 17th chance. I primed them first and then hit them with that green and man, it was gorgeous. I waited about a day for them to dry and then added the silver lining to the rim of the spokes using a silver paint pen. I really love adding this extra details to models with darker painted wheels to really make them pop. While they dried, I received yet another item that I should have invested in long ago, that being a Dremel stylo. I was particularly excited for this one as it would make the sanding process so much easier. With it, I cleaned up the cab, adding some additional curved edges to the rear, as well as making the window deeper. With the body sanded and ready for primer, I'd like to present a new segment to these videos I'd like to call, Oops, I Forgot the Tender. I was actually planning to make Emily's Tender three wheels long, but I decided for now the two-wheeled version was perfect. Maybe that'll be a future video, though. We start off with some classic Geo disassembly, including getting scratched by the hammer while trying to take off the wheels. A classic.
Once everything was removed, I decided to add one of the two modifications. First was including adding the fence around the colo. This was done with my old friend coffee stir sticks and secured in with wood glue. Once it dried, I took the tender main body and chassis out for filler primer. I used a duplicolor filler that worked pretty well. It dried super fast, which is amazingly convenient. After the first coat, I brought the body inside and added filler to the more desperate areas and gave it a light sand. Then I primed it, and then I gave it a light sand. And then I primed it, and then I gave it a light sand. And then I primed it, and then I gave it a light sand. And, it light sand. and it was perfect and then I gave it a green coat. And then for the tender, I bet you forgot about that now too, which I only had to hit with filler once, and then I painted it. And that's when the paint started to act up on the body. It was mostly fine, but the tender was disastrous. I'll save the details as I don't want to spend an extra 20 minutes talking about this, but it was salvaged in the end. The paint just had this issue with caking up on the surface and then not wanting to dry despite being left for more than 48 hours. On the subject of difficult parts, probably the most trickiest part was coming up, that being Emily's face, and this created a huge problem. For most of my model projects in the past, I've usually used the face that came with the model I was working with, but Emily's was a unique issue. Not only could it not fit on the new smoke box I made, but it just looked really bad. And she looks angry for some reason, like what's up with that? I took a look at most of the Emily toys released in North America that I had access to and most of them just looked off. Nothing captured Emily's clever and confident attitude. The closest was the take-along face which was decent but I just felt it lacked any depth so I had to look for international offerings. Luckily that's where today's sponsor Bayi comes in. Bayi is a proxy service that can help you get merchandise, toys, video games and clothes from Japan. With it, you can buy an incredible range of products from Rakuten, Rakuma, Mercari, and Yahoo Japan shopping and auctions. I'll provide more details on how to use this service and its perks later in the video, but using Bai, I was able to get a Brio Shinkansen train, which is a Japanese exclusive product that you can't buy from Brio in North America, a Playrail Thomas, the Nichoji Manga, a Love Live Nezoberry, a Bang Dream Nezoberry, this incredible Playrail Switch track, which only costs $7 through Amazon Japan, some capsule Playrail trains for future custom assistance, but most importantly was this lot, which included three models from the Nakayoshi range of Thomas toys, and an additional die-cast model. Those being Spencer, Harvey, a Thomas Land bus, and you guessed it, Emily. Out of all the Emily toys released, the Nakayoshi one looked by far the best. I knew if I had to use a face from a toy, it had to be this one. Now that we have the face, we need something to put it on. So back to the smoke box, I cut a cover out of paper to cover the exposed area. Then to represent frames, and yes, thanks to all the YouTube comments, I know what the proper name for them are, I cut the rounded edges off a popsicle stick, ironically the part I usually discard, and carefully glued it to the area I just covered. Once it was dry, I took it out and gave it a couple of hits of filler primer. As that dried, I returned to the body to remove the painter's tape and apply more painter's tape as it was time for hand painting. I started this as I always do with a light grey for the running board and then red for the buffer beam. 
The red is always such a pain as it's really thin and I have to do multiple coats, but it's worth it for that little pop it gives to the model. A warm caramel color was applied to the sides of the running board which really tied the look together in my opinion. The color I used was a bit darker and a tad more saturated than what it should be but I like it that way. For the tender, I started by gluing a 1x1 Lego flat stud on the inside to represent a water cap. Out of the way! Get away! The coal load was test fitted to see if it could still squeeze in with the added part, and then painted black for a more uniform look. The same black was then used for the interior and the front of the tender. Once it was all dry, and you can take a shot every time I say that, the coal load was glued into place and it was decal time. Now my plan for this model was to use decals on the tender, but for the body of the loco, hand painting the lining on. Now in theory this was quite the ambitious feat considering my previous experience with hand painting lining. It's bad. But as luck had it, I ended up completely using printed decals for the whole thing because the cruel paint gods did not shine upon me. No, 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 no. I started with the tender decals which were pretty simple as they were basically three rectangles. I printed the pieces out and applied them to the model. It's technically not accurate but a decal was made for the rear as well as I felt it looked empty. Once they were applied I masked off the sides and painted a line adjacent to the running board on the locomotive and underneath that a black line to blend into the chassis. Before making the locomotive's decals, I decided to take on the stripes, or for those technically inclined, boiler bands. Instead of painting them, and due to the fact that the bands on the model are actually gold, I bought some gold tape on Amazon to use to get the right thickness. I cut a strip on my cutting mat, and then from that piece, sliced off a thin strip to use. Then I just started applying them to the model. Unfortunately, the first set I did ended up being too thick, so I took them off, cutting a thinner piece and reapplied them. I'm so glad I did because the second attempt looked so much better. Ever presently with the bands done, I moved on to making the main body decals, firstly starting by scanning Emily into the computer. Now before I said the tender was pretty easy, but oh man, this was so much more difficult. Mostly as I had to make these perfectly fit around the curved areas in the cab. In fact, the one for the cab as a result ended up being too tall, but eh, I feel it works. Once complete, I printed them and applied them to the model, and at this point we were in the home stretch.
I decided now I'd try to wrap up some other parts of the build, so I decided to seal the wheels with some Mod Podge spray. And of course, the paint decided to bubble. Great. So now we do the wheels again. I took the wheels and let them soak in a mix of water and acetone. Then after sitting for around 6 hours or so, using a toothbrush, I scrubbed all the remaining paint off each wheel, which was annoying yet slightly satisfying at the same time. Once they were all clean and dried, I took them outside to be primed once again. I decided to use the filler primer seeing as it seemed to react well with the Rust-Oleum paint. I also reprimed the smoke box after giving it a light sanding, and what would become the buffer beams for the tender. In fact, let's hop back to the smoke box real quick. After the prime, it was basically finalized, and I was so proud at how smooth I was able to get it, thanks to the Dremel. I gave it a coat of black paint, and it was done. Shortly after, the funnel was glued in too, and how could I forget her safety valve? Using the same lath method as the funnel, I created a groove in a dowel, cut it down, added the rounded top using a hole punch in cardstock, and finished it off by painting it gold. Rounding off some of the final details, I used some coffee stir sticks painted red to make buffer beams on the tender. And after this, Emily was basically done. I couldn't believe it. The body, tender, and smoke box were sealed with Krylon gloss, and now it was time for the final assembly. The engine was beautiful, with shiny paintwork and a gleaming brass dome. Thomas, meet Emily. Hello, Emily. Hello to you. It gives me great pleasure to present you with two new coaches. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I took Annie and Clarabelle. And I'm sorry I was so cross. Friends. Friends! Emily loves her coaches and being part of Sir Topham Hatt's Railway. And now a quick word about today's sponsor, Bai. If you haven't heard of it, Bai is a proxy service to help purchase merchandise from Japanese shopping websites like Yahoo Japan Shopping and Auction, Mercari, Rakuten, Rakuma, and more. Bai opens the door to buy products available only in Japan, just like the Playrail line of toys. Classic Thomas Playrail models haven't been available in North America and many other countries since 2009, but they're still available in Japan and are available to order using Bai. Scalpers on eBay will have you paying almost 60 Canadian dollars for replacement Playrail traction tires and coupling pieces. Using Bai's Add to Bai extension on Amazon Japan, you can get the same parts for as low as $2.30 a pack each and have enough left over for two trains. One of the most handy features of Bai is its package consolidation service, which allows you to purchase multiple items from different stores and have them all shipped in one box, an incredibly convenient option. You can use my link in the description to try Bai out and receive a 10% discount off your first purchase. I can personally give my seal of approval for Bai, as it's a service I've used many times in the past and highly recommend. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video and making this project happen. With the sponsor read over, before we go, I have a bit of an important shout out to give. And of course, that's our final sponsor, the Sodor Shipping Co. Okay, no, only joking. But seriously, I wanted to give a shout out to a specific user, without whom this video probably wouldn't have happened, that being Star Hunter. The first time I've ever seen anyone try to modify a TWR Emily was their attempt in 2022. Although it was never finished, seeing this was a huge piece of inspiration to me, and I probably wouldn't have attempted this custom at all if it wasn't for their attempts. 
It's also worth recognizing the incredible range of locomotives Star has made in the past. I've been awed by the sheer amount of different locos they've designed, and more impressively only using parts and pieces from wooden railway locomotives. Very dedicated to accuracy and a very impressive move if I say so myself. If you have the chance, please check out their work with links in the description. And well, that's it for Emily. I have to say I'm really happy with how she turned out after what was a slightly torturous, messy, and yet satisfying process. I do have some areas I'd like to amend in future, but that's likely an adventure for another day. But to round this video off with another message, I'd like to also thank everyone who made it out to the Great British Train Show 2024 in Brampton, Ontario, where Emily made her first public debut. Adrian, also known as Northern Star on Twitter, gave me the opportunity to display some of my models alongside his incredible display of Shining Time Station props and memorabilia, which was running in association with the Gage 1 Maithwaite layout. It was such an honor not only to present my work alongside such influential and immaculately curated displays, but to be approached by so many people who had seen my videos. I could not have been more thankful to hear that my content that I assumed wasn't going to make a splash on the web had inspired so many people. And for that experience, I will be internally grateful. Okay, now I promise that's the end of the video. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing, and also please check out my link tree for links to all my social media. And with that, I've been Gio, it's been a long one, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you next time.